Hi there, if you're watching this, chances are you've probably used the Kindle app on your phone or iPad to read at some point. The Kindle app is one of the best apps out there for reading in general, but there's a new app right now that's making headlines everywhere and is taking the community by storm. The app that I'm talking about is the Readwise Reader app. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a huge fan of Readwise. In a nutshell, they offer a service for managing Kindle highlights. Now they have two different applications. One is the new reader app that we'll be talking about, but they also have an existing app called Readwise, which I've been using every single day to review my old highlights from books I've read in the past. I literally cannot live without their service. Now when Readwise announced they were making a reading app, this was a very big deal. And now that they've been working on it for quite a while now, I can confidently say this is the best reading app out there on the internet. In today's video, I'll be showing you the reader app and how I use it personally in my daily workflow. But I'll also be talking about if you should consider switching over to it for all your reading needs. Now the first thing I want to discuss is the reader app for you. Should you consider switching over to it? Now the thing I need to say right off the bat is this app is not a replacement for reading Kindle books. You cannot buy any books directly in this app. You have to supply the app with your own content to read with. So if you are someone who has a lot of EPUB files or maybe you read a lot of blogs or online articles or maybe you subscribe to RSS feeds or you subscribe to a bunch of newsletters, then this app will be very useful for you. But if all you do is read Kindle books that you buy from Amazon, this app probably won't be useful at all. Now, another thing I should mention is the app is currently in a public free beta, so you can sign up and use it for free right now, but that's not gonna be the case for long. Once they exit the beta period, this will require a Readwise subscription, which currently costs $8 a month. Now, the Readwise team has announced that the price of the subscription to use the Reader app will be going up after the beta is up, but if you subscribe right now, you will be grandfathered in to the $8 a month pricing. I do have an affiliate link that you can use to sign up with an extended free trial of 60 days instead of the normal 30 days if you wanna try out Readwise in the Reader app and get that pricing of $8 a month. They're not sponsoring me, I still pay for this service all by myself, but I do have the affiliate link which will support this channel if you're interested. Now that we've talked about who this app is for, let's actually discuss getting content into the the app so you can read things inside of it. And the primary way you can do that while you're browsing the web is by using the browser extension for the reader app. Say you're visiting your favorite blog, such as mine for example, and you're browsing through it and you want to save the article into the reader app to read inside of the app. All you have to do is press on the reader app extension, it will capture the whole article and save it into the app. Another really useful feature of the extension is say you're browsing a newsletter that has a bunch of links in it to other articles, but you don't want to actually read those articles right now. What you can do is right click on any link that you're on the internet with and then save it to the reader app directly from that right click menu without actually having to open up the link at all. Once your article or piece of content ends up in the reader app, you can see that it very cleanly forms formats it for the best reading experience possible. It strips away all the extra fluff. It makes the text nice and readable. All the images usually end up just fine. Sometimes there are some formatting issues, but for the most part, it is designed for a clean reading experience without any other distractions. Now you're probably wondering, why should I use this reader app to be reading in the first place? Now, again, going back to what I said before, Readwise is known for their highlight management service, and that is no different with the reader app. With the reader app, you can now begin highlighting all these different articles and newsletters letters and RSS feeds directly in the reader app and sync all those highlights into your Readwise library. This is a very, very specific niche use case, but if you do use Readwise and you rely on them for managing all your highlights, this is a game-changing feature. I use Readwise for all my Kindle books and I've always wanted a way to highlight articles on the web or newsletters that I get in my inbox. And now I have an easy way of highlighting all these things that I want to remember for the future and they end up alongside all my Kindle Kindle highlights. Kindle books are just one form of reading. I do a lot of my reading outside of Kindle books and now I have a way of marking those up as well. Another cool feature of the browser extension is you can actually highlight directly on the web without importing the article to your reader app. So say you're on a blog and you want to highlight while you read on the blog, you don't really care so much about importing it, you can 
can actually do that directly on the web page itself, which is a really cool feature as well. Now I've been talking a bit about newsletters and RSS feeds, and I want to dive a little deeper into this because for me, this is the primary reason why I use Reader in the first place. I do read a lot of articles on the web, but more often than not, I am using the Reader app to read all my newsletters. Now as a content creator myself, I have my own weekly newsletter where I send out a weekly email to a community of bookworms while we read one new book every single month. Link down below for that if you're interested. But Outside of that, I actually subscribe to a ton of email newsletters myself from other creators that I follow. The cool thing with the Reader app is they have this whole separate section within the app called the feed. And inside the feed, you can subscribe to email newsletters with a unique Reader email address. I want to emphasize this point for a second. Having a separate application where all your newsletters and subscriptions flow into that it's outside of your primary email inbox is actually a game-changing experience. For a long time, I had all of these newsletters going into my personal email and it got really overwhelming because I would often have a lot of important emails from things I need to actually respond to. Then on top of that, I had all these newsletters that I want to read for fun, but they shouldn't be in the same place. I need to distinguish what's important from what's casual reading. Now with the Reader app, I have my own personal email address that I can use for subscribing to newsletters and they end up in my Reader feed instead of my personal inbox. And that cleans up my email so much. I've gotten into the morning routine now where I open up the Reader app every day and go through my feed and review some newsletters that I've gotten over the past 24 hours. It's a very casual way and a very intentional way of reading these emails that don't distract you during your day when you get them in your regular inbox. The reader feed also supports RSS subscriptions. So if you have an RSS feed for a blog that you're following or a Substack email newsletter, for example, you can easily input that into your reader app and it'll automatically get those new subscriptions without having to subscribe via email. So again, the number one reason here is to get all of these newsletters out of my email inbox into a separate application. And on top of that, I can also highlight while I read and have a very clean and modern reading experience that is designed for this exact purpose. The Reader app makes reading all these different subscriptions the best experience possible. Now subscriptions are my personal favorite reason for using the Reader app, but I know a lot of people who are using this app for EPUB files. If you have a large EPUB library of books, say you download books outside of Amazon from other websites, you can actually use Reader to read all these books. Now I don't use EPUBs very often myself, but whenever I do, I have sent them over to my Kindle and that works just fine. But oftentimes I run into formatting issues and conversion issues. But with the Reader app, it basically turns these EPUB books into one giant blog post, a way to read a book that I've never really tried before. Importing an EPUB is super simple. Just drag and drop it into the Reader app and automatically you'll see it pop up and you can start reading it like an article. It's a really elegant way of reading a book. And again, you have all those same features of being able to highlight, take notes, all while reading in the app. Now there are so many other notable features of this app. I can't possibly dive into all of them, but there are a few more that I want to make sure I mention. Going along with the EPUB thing that I was just talking about, another really useful feature that helps with that is text-to-speech. Reader has full support for text-to-speech if you're reading on the mobile device. They don't currently have this for the web app, but if you're reading on your phone or your iPad, you can access text-to-speech and it'll automatically start reading your articles articles, your EPUBs, your newsletters in an audio format, which is super useful. It's like having an Audible subscription or having a personal narrator directly in your app. Another really useful feature of the Reader app that they added not too long ago is transcriptions for YouTube videos. If you're saving a YouTube video into the Reader app, it will automatically grab the transcription for the entire video, which you can then highlight while you watch through it. Again, it's such a simple thing, but it makes watching a YouTube video so much more effective, especially if it's educational content, you can highlight the transcription and go back and revisit those highlights very quickly. Another really promising feature of the Reader app is the Ghost Reader artificial intelligence bot that they have built into the Reader app. This is basically a mini version of ChatGPT, you can say, in the Reader app. You can ask it questions, it can summarize things for you, it can create discussion questions. It has all these capabilities that will only get more advanced with time. Another really cool feature 
feature of the Reader app is the advanced workflows that they offer. If you are someone who follows the GTD method of productivity, you'll be very happy to know that Reader is actually built around that premise of having an inbox that you sort through and triage, and then you go through the management of that. It's a really simple practice, but it makes saving a bunch of articles actually manageable so you go through all of them at some point and not just have this giant queue of things that you don't read. Or if you really want to, you can use it as a regular reading app and just have one giant queue. It doesn't matter, they give you different options to choose from. But what I'm trying to say here, this is very pro user friendly. There are so many advanced features that you can play with. And the last feature that I wanna make sure I mention here is this TikTok mode that I've seemed to discovered in the app. Basically, if you're viewing the feed on your phone, there is a button here to turn the feed into more like a TikTok feed where you just swipe up and go through all your articles and pick and choose the ones you actually want to read. This is a really quick way of going through a ton of different articles all at once without feeling pressure to read every single one. I can't emphasize enough how cool this app is. It's very promising. We're still in the early days. I think part of the reason why it's such a cool app is the team developing it are hardcore readers themselves. They're really passionate about this technology and they really are changing the game when it comes to reading on the phone or iPad or on the web. And I cannot wait to see what features are coming in the pipeline. Personally, I still use my Kindle for all my Kindle books, but I am now using the Reader app for everything else. If I have to read an article or a newsletter or anything else, I always put it in my reader app and I only use my Kindle now for Kindle books. So it's a very clear distinction and I'm very happy with my current setup. Now, regardless of whether or not you choose to use the reader app or just use the Kindle for everything, you'll still probably benefit from the Readwise service, the original Readwise service that I've been using every single day. And that is something that I wanna make sure you learn more about. I have a whole video talking about how to use Readwise and why it's such a great way to manage your Kindle highlights. Link for that video on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.